The Mountain Bike World Cup is brought to you by Giant, Earth, Wind and Bicycles and Shimano, Original Bike Components. Hello, welcome to Eurosport. My name is Mark by Siegel and we are at Spindlerov Mlin in the Czech Republic for the fifth round of the Cross Country Grundig World Cup. What a beautiful setting we have today for the race. The weather is fine, it's warm and sunny. It's about 15 degrees. You're looking at the resort of Spindler of Mlin, a skiing resort in the winter. But today, we're here for the Mountain Bike World Cup. Of course, we were here two years ago in 1995 for the European Championships when the French rider Jean-Christophe Savignoni won the men's race. And more notably for the British viewers, it was Caroline Alexander, the British rider, then riding for BMW Klein, who won the women's race the first major medal in a major championships won by a British rider. What a fabulous ride that was. She came first, it was the Spanish rider, Silvia Rovira Planis that was second, followed by the Czech rider, Katarina Numanova, who was third back in 1994, 1995, sorry. In the French race, it was Savignoni who was first, followed by the Italian, Luca Bramati, and the two Frenchmen, Jean, uh, Christophe Dupuy and Miguel Martinez in third and fourth spot. But the course here today, it's seven laps for the men. A lot of climbing, as you can see by the uh, course description there, 303, th 30 meters, sorry. Not that much technical stuff, much like uh, last week's race in Budapest. But we'll, we'll be looking out for these riders, the Sun Nike riders. There's the British rider, David Baker, riding for GT. Miguel Martinez looks like he's growing moustache. Pa <laughs> Sorry, Hubert Paluba, the Diamondback rider. Thomas Frischnecht, so, so dominant in World Cup racing. And this was the standings before the start of the race today. Cade Levens, unbelievably, not here today. He decided at the start of this season that... Uh, he was going to do the first four rounds of the World Cup and then move over to the, uh, to the American continent to get ready for the American rounds and to race some of their races over there. That this weekend, he is racing the first round of the Norba Championships at Big Bear, California. But Cade Levens, World Cup leader, not World Cup leader, sorry, not here today. What a turn up for the books that is. And he's been going so well recently. Came, well, recently, <laughs> the first four races, of course. But first of all, we're going to take you back before we go live to the men's race. We're going to take you back to the initial rounds. And what's got to be said, though, is the dominance of the French team, the Sun Nike French team. Since 1996, they seem to have uh, just blown everybody apart. They bought road racing tactics to mountain biking. It never really was like that beforehand. But at the start of the race today, five French riders in the top 10 of the World Cup. And this is a very, very fast start. Very hard as well. The course is somewhat different than it was two years ago for the European Championships. It's a... Uh, shortly after the start, it climbs up. Uh, the pictures you're watching now, a very, very grassy start, which of course will sap the strength of these riders. 138 men starting today. As I said earlier, the conditions almost perfect for mountain biking. Sunny, 15 degrees, not too hot. No rain as it was yesterday for the women's race. I'll tell you about that later on in the program. But a very, very difficult start. 
And it looks like, I think that's Alice, um, Hubert Paluba, the Diamondback rider on the front of the race so far. But you can see the blue jerseys of the Sun Nike team behind them. Number nine there, Thomas Frischnick, dropping in behind Christophe Dupuy, number two in the World Cup at the moment. The red rider there wearing the Danish jersey, that's Michael Rasmussen. Really is a lottery at the start. Got to, got to have such a good start. Some of the notable absentees from the start today. Mike Kluger, the German rider. Luca Bamati, winner of the first round of the World Cup. Just look at this start. Very, very, very difficult. But the Italian, as they aren't known to do, the Italians, going off extremely fast from the start. Followed very closely by the Spanish rider. Another new name to the circuit as Javier Notario Francisco. I hope, they, I hope I pronounced that correctly. But the course, 6.4 kilometers long, slightly shorter than it was two years ago. This Barry Clark, yellow and blue, just going through your picture. Just look at how steep that climb is. So anaerobic right from the start. Wow. Looks very painful. One rider there, number 142, already off his bike and walking. Probably thinks that that's a better way to go, first of all. That's Philip Tavell, the Swedish rider, riding for the, uh, for the national team. That Paluba already got a good start, followed by the, uh, by the Belgian rider, Philip Mierhager. Christophe Dupuy going through. Dario Cioni, all the notable names, first of all. The Sun Nike team, right to the fore. Thomas Frischnick, number nine. Very, there's Runa Hoydel, number four, going through. Barry Clark, number 20. You just caught a picture of him there. Not very technical. Philip Mierhager didn't do the first rounds of the World Cup. He's been around a long, long time. He won the Junior Downhill World Championships back in 1988, of course. But he's still only 27 years old. He's a very strong rider, although I wouldn't expect to see him this close to the front of the race at the end of the race. This is where it's so important to get a good start. There's one of the riders coming off there, number 48. Just check to see who that was. That was Jan Vijak riding for Harrow. This is where the rider's going to lose so much time. My word, there's a Sun Knight rider right at the... Right at the back of the field there. I don't think this is quite legal. But if one person does it, I suppose everyone's going to do it. I think the course marshal should come around and check this part of the course. As I say, this is the fifth round of the World Cup. Oh, and that's a bad fall there. Number 29. This is the standings after five laps so far today. Miguel Martinez in the lead, followed by teammate Christoph Herese, Michael Rasmussen in third. Another Sun Nike rider in fifth, Runa Heidel in seventh. Dominic Arnaud, no, what is it about these French? They just seem to know how to ride World Cups. And Miguel Martinez. He actually said, he, he actually said uh, a couple of weeks back that he was uh, he was fed up with having a lot of bad luck. If, if coming fourth is bad luck, and that uh, he wanted a winner race, and I think he's setting about doing that here today. We are now going live, and that is your leader there, Miguel Martinez. The only race he hasn't finished was the one in Wellington when he double punctured, but apart from that, he's, he's had very good results, and he seems to think that's bad, bad luck. He came fourth in the first round as we look at a slow-mo. Martinez himself.
this is Miguel Martinez's teammate. That's Ludovic Dubot. Always rides the Spinergy. Carbon wheels. I think that's Christophe Dupuy, his teammate. Currently lying in second spot in the World Cup. And there's Martinez. You see the tiny figure up there. In fact, I was wrong then. It wasn't Dupuy. It was uh, Christophe Herisse. He's a new name to, uh, to the World Cup watchers, Herisse. He is actually a very good rider. Recently came second in the uh, off-road tour of Spain. In fact, came 10th overall in the Vete Te last year, the Velo Tour Taran. Or in English, the uh, stage, the uh, mountain bike version of the Tour de France. And this is a view of the course you get today. As you can see, not very technical, but very fast on the descent and very tough on the ascents. Two major climbs in the race. Second climb, 175 meters. This is where team, taxi, team tactics can play such a major part when it's not too technical. The team can work together as they did last week in Budapest. As we look at some of the back markers, we're now at about the three kilometer mark of the course. These are all lapped riders. 138 starters, as I mentioned before. And the lead motorbike, or a motorbike which goes in front of a lead rider coming through your picture now. This is definitely not the leader. These riders are soon to be passed by the leader, number 141 there. That's Robert Glazier. This is the leader, number six, Miguel Martinez, riding for Sun Nike, the tiny junior world champion from 1994 in Vail, Colorado, who rode such a strong race there. And in fact, since that time, he's had major battles with the Australian rider, Kay Levens, current World Cup leader who's not here today. This is a lap rider, don't worry about him. You see, you see the time gap, the left-hand section of your uh, television screen. We're at the 35 and a half kilometer mark. It's already over half a minute. Martinez has been promising to do this all season. And it looks like he's got a long, a long, long gap to the next rider. This is another lap rider. This is the start of the major climb. As we go back to Martinez. As I was saying, he's had major battles with Cade Levens. Australian Diamondback rider. As his teammate, Christophe Herisse, Christophe Dupuy and Ludovic Dubot go through your picture. Is this going to be a first in the World Cup? Four Frenchmen in the first four so far. Four teammates at that. And I also hear from my uh, French counterpart here at Eurosport that uh, world champion Jerome Ciotti did not actually start today. Hasn't been feeling too well after last week's round in Budapest. And there you have confirmation of the standings at the moment. Martinez almost a minute in front of Herisse with Dupuy just on his tail. When he climbs, it's notable how he sits right at the front of his saddle. And he's determined to make this race his, his own. As we look at the style of the man.
good caption of what Miguel Martinez is all about there. He came third overall in the World Cup last year and he was very disappointed not to have won the Espoirs World Championships in Australia. Going so well before the Italian rider Dario Accaroli absolutely blasted past him and won by a very comfortable two minutes. Well, in fact, it was almost three minutes. And Martinez only just held off the man I was talking about earlier, Cadel Evans, and he held him off by six seconds there. But as I was saying, I think the French riders have brought a certain amount of road racing tactics to mountain biking. They ride in it as a team. They ride as a team, almost as a nationality as well. Martinez in the lead, followed closely by Dupuy, by Dubot, by Paluba, the lone Italian amongst the Frenchmen. With Rune Hoydl just behind him. Of course, I don't know whether viewers will remember Hoydl's magnificent season in 1995 when he won five World Cup races, never been done before. Look at the handling. Martinez, so quick and light on the bike. I don't know whether any of the viewers would have noticed last week at uh, Budapest, but both Martinez and Dupuy decided before the race that they were going to ride rigid forks. They felt that there wasn't enough on the course to, uh, for them to use uh, suspended front forks. I think it looks though like that uh, Martinez is riding suspension today, but he's got a big gap. These are back markers, don't take any notice of them. He's got a big gap on the next rider coming through. And by my last count, it was uh, Christophe Dupuy. These are the second and third place riders, teammates of Martinez. It is indeed uh, Dubot and Dupuy, I think. Difficult to tell from such a long camera angle. Ludovic Dubot usually rides the Spinergy uh, wheels. This is the five and a half kilometer mark. Martinez, of course, came third at the Olympics. Behind Thomas Frischnecht in second and Bart Brentjens, who hasn't really been seen on the World Cup scene this year. I think he's, um, he's planning an all-out all -out assault on the World Championship that he won back in 1995. Of course, coached by Gert Jan Turney, he's a former king, king of the mountains in the uh, road version of the Tour de France. This is Martinez coming into the start finish area. The men doing seven laps, so he'll have one more lap to do after this, I believe. Goes across the line in 143.22. Let's see what the gap's going to be to the next rider through, which it was at the uh, current standings. It was Dupuy, his teammate. What about that then? Four French riders in the top four. An Italian and a Norwegian right behind them. This is the long, hard climb. Looks like uh, Martin is pushing a big gear. Somewhat deceiving though from that camera angle. Haven't seen sight nor sound of the 
best placed British rider in the World Cup at the moment, David Baker. Up to this race, he was lying in fifth spot with a best of, uh, in fact, his best position was two ninths in the first two races of the World Cup. And then a 14th and a 20th after that. Indeed it is. Martinez's teammates coming through. Dupuy and Dubot. It's going to be Dupuy over the line first in 1.15 with Dubot right on his tail. 1.15 behind. What really has happened to the Americans in World Cup racing? It's the French that are now so dominant. We will be taking a short break. Join us after that for the men's race. Back live to the Mountain Bike World Cup with Giant Earth, Wind and Bicycles. Welcome back to Spindelhof Mlin. This is the current standings after six laps. Miguel Martinez in the lead in front, 1.16 in front of teammate Christophe Dupuré. Ludovic Dubo in third spot, just behind Dupuré. Christophe Herisay, another teammate, 1.37 behind him. We go down to the bottom, three, six, seven and eight. Michael Rasmussen, Bruno Heidel. This really is a Sun Nike uh, domination race, isn't it? Harry say not previously seen on the World Cup. He only had one result last year. In fact, two results last year. And they were pretty minor placings. As we look at current leader Miguel Martinez, it really is astonishing. I can't help repeating myself that the French domination of cross-country riding was only two years ago. There you have a brief rundown of his, uh, his Palmares at the moment. He's ranked third in the world. Six so far in the World Cup after having missed the second round or punctured in the second round in Wellington. That was actually wrong. He didn't come first last year. He was third in the World Cup last year, Miguel Martinez. But since 1995, they had their first result in the top 20 back then. But last year, they clearly dominated not only the World Cup, World Championships, Europeans. They won five races in the World Cup last year. Five out of 10 races. They came second in four and third in two. And in fact, the first time they were in the top 20 was back in Australia in 1995 at Cairns when uh, Martinez was uh, 18th and Dupuy was 14th. So it really is marvellous how they've concentrated their efforts on cross country. They were so dominant in downhill racing. This is Runa Hoydal. Just had a slow-mo of Runa Heidel currently lying in seventh place as we go back to the second and third riders, teammates of Miguel Martinez in first. This is Christophe Dupuy at the head of the two, ranked second, second in the World Cup so far this year. And in fact, that caption was wrong. Was wrong. He won the World Cup last year. He didn't come second. He picked Thomas Frischnick. This is Ludwig, Ludwig Dubot. Very low standing in the World Cup last year, only 59th, currently lying in third place. Dubot has been a consistent rider, hasn't been out of the top eight. In fact, that was his lo lowest position in uh, St. Vendor. He came eighth there. 
A very fast course. He's had two fifth spots and a fourth. Fourth in Wellington. And as you can see, a lot of climbing. Very fast descending. Don't worry about this rider, it's one of the back markers, number 211. Should be waiting for the motorbike for the lead rider, which I would presume is Miguel Martin, as he looks so strong. He didn't look like he was going to tire, although recently he has had a habit of going off very, very hard. Don't worry about this guy either. This is a lap rider, number 248. And so is this guy, number 240 as well. They won't really like being lap, will they? And this is the number one rider, number six, Miguel Martinez. John Cos, John just gone past number 238. That's uh, Lubos Lom riding for Giant Ch from the Czech Republic. As we put our stopwatch on uh, Martinez to see the gap between him and our second place rider, which was Christophe Dupuy. Back in 95, when we had the European Championships here, there was over 40,000 people came to watch. This is another lap rider. Don't worry about him. And in fact, now uh, it's so important for the riders to uh, carry on, even though they may get despondent at losing a lot of time, even being lapped, because now World Cup points actually go down to the 75th rider. Last year, and in fact, previously in the World Cup, riders only got points down to number 50, where you got one point. Leader got 60 points. Now it's slightly different, the leader in the men's, men's cross country gets 100 points, down to one point for 75th spot. The leader gets 100, the first place rider, sorry, gets 100. Second place, 93, third, 87, fourth, 82, fifth, 78, sixth, 75. And after the 10th place rider at, at uh, 66 points, it goes down by one point increments to 75. In the women's, it's changed from the top 25 getting points. As we go back to the second and third place riders, they're losing time. They're losing time. One minute 45 behind now. At the start of this lap, it was only 1.15 the gap. So uh, Martinez has in fact put 30 seconds into Dupuye. Just watch him climb. Great slow-mo of uh, the leader of the race here in the Czech Republic as he's constantly checking back to see the gap between himself and the second place rider. It really is astounding that someone so young has the endurance to uh, remain or compete at the highest level in World Cup racing. You expect riders a, a little bit older to be up there like Thomas Frischnett. We haven't seen anything of him so far in today's race, apart from at the start. Where is Frischnet? I'm hearing nothing over my headphones, so I'm afraid I can't tell you. It would be good to hear 
something about the lower place riders just to give us some sort of indication at how fast uh, Martinez and the, his son Nike teammates are going. Of course, back in 95, Martinez actually came fourth in the European Championships behind teammate Christophe Dupuy. And in fact, there were four Frenchmen in the top 10 that year in the uh, 95 European Championships. Actually, three. I'm, I, was, I had a mistake there. It was Dupuy, Martinez, and Jerome Ciotti, 96 world champion. And that's the gap to, to, to Dupuy and Dubo. As I was saying, going back to the points in the women's cross country, they now have points down to the 50th place rider. And instead of uh, 35 points for the first place, it's 75, 75 points. <laughs> Martin is there. <laughs> He's enjoying himself today, isn't he? Obviously not having any problem staying ahead of his teammates. How on earth do they do it? I remember talking to uh, some of the best British riders, Barry Clark, David Baker, Nicky Craig, Gary Ford, veterans of uh, the World Cup circuit, and they are just astonished at the strength and depth indeed of uh, French cross-country riding now. This Sun, Ni Sun Nike team, or as they were, the Sun Chippy team, they were noted for their downhilling prowess. But they decided back in 95 that they wanted to compete seriously in cross country, and my word. Look at what's happening now. Incredible. There's a stage we're at. At this, at this point in the race, five and a half kilometers from the finish. As we look at the newly mustachioed Miguel Martinez ripping off his uh, breathing apparatus. Look at the speed that he's turning out there. I don't know what that is. It's like a sandstorm, doesn't it? But as important as the French domination of World Cup racing now is the American decline. Nice, nice shot of Martinez. Will he win this race today? Martinez currently lying in first spot. His teammate Dupuy in second. Dubot in third, and it looks like Christophe Dupuy is going to come across the line in first spot here in the Czech Republic. <laughs> he doesn't wheelie across as he did at the Olympics last year, but he's a very happy Frenchman. Doesn't look the slightest bit phased, does he? Marvellous riding from Martinez. This wonder kid from France, Garchisse in Burgundy, only weighs a staggering 52 kilos. He's lighter than a lot of the best women racers on the circuit. 164 meters tall. Let's have a look. That's his team team boss, Max Commensal. Just, be, just being told, your ride was magnificent. These are his two teammates coming through for a Sun Nike domination of this, the fifth round of the Grundig World Cup. Christophe Dupoe in second spot at the moment, and it's his teammate, Ludovic Dubot, just behind him. Will it be a sprint finish? I'm sure it will be. They may be teammates, but when it comes to World Cup points, it's every man for himself. And I think at the moment, Dubo is in the best place he could be. The 
23-year-old Frenchman from Ras, married, got twins. As these riders being told to get out of the way, it's the second and third place riders coming through to the finish. Who's it going to be? Is it going to be a sprint finish? I don't think it looks like Dubot is going to go for this. I think he's going to let Christophe Dupuy win it. Not much of a sprint finish there. They're going to come across all just under two minutes. In fact, 1.44 behind teammate Miguel Martinez. Look, that's the first time it's ever happened in the World Cup. The first three spots going to three Frenchmen, all on the all on the same team. Excellent riding as the riders get their bikes checked. My word, this really is incredible. And it looks like Michael Rasmussen. What a good ride from him. The Danish rider riding for Trek VW comes across in fourth spot. 2.15 down on Martinez. Danish champion. Rasmussen had a brilliant year back in uh, 1995 when he came sixth overall. Okay. 23-year-old uh, Dane. He used to ride for Scott, of course, and it looks like the Italian Hubert Paluba coming, coming across the line in fifth spot, number eight, lying eighth in the World Cup up to this point. He's 2.47 behind. Uh, Martinez. Good ride from uh, okay. Hubert Paluba. And I must admit, I'm somewhat surprised by the lack of form of his teammate, Alessandro Fontana. Last year, they were so good in the World Cup. Came fourth and fifth over, overall as another Sun Nike rider, leader for such a long time. Christoph Harris say he couldn't keep it up, but he comes across in six spots. That's his best position so far in the World Cup this year. He had an eighth in Wellington, but I must uh, say most of the best riders weren't at that round. Where is Frischnick? Hoydal, Baker. Chotti, of course Chotti didn't ride today. There you have confirmation of the uh, result today. A Sun Nike French, one, two, three. Dupuy, 145 behind. Dubot, 146. Rasmussen, 215 behind. Paluba, 248 behind. Runa Hoydl actually comes across the line in seventh spot, 341 down. That's his best ride since the first round in the Napa, at the Napa Valley in California when he came second. That's going to lift him uh, or keep him in full spot overall in the World Cup. We take a look at the winner today, Martinez. Well, the end of the men's race, Miguel Martinez, what a dominant ride today. First spot, a French domination all round. We're going to take a short break. We'll be showing you the, showing you the women's race after. Back live to the Mountain Bike World Cup with Shimano, original bike components. Welcome back to the Czech Republic at Spindelrov Mlin, home of the 1995 Euro European Championships and of course, the fifth round of the Grande Cross Country World Cup in 1997. The winner of the men's race, Miguel Martinez. But yesterday, we had the women's race, and there was the standings before yesterday's event. Paola Pezzo with two wins and two second places, just in front of Alison Sidor. Chandel Tacor in sixth spot, Annabella Stropara in seventh. With Britain's Caroline Alexander in tenth spot. Only 36 riders here today, a very small field. 
Alison Sidor, world champion, wearing a long sleeve jersey, and in fact wearing wearing tights as well. So it, it was a lot colder yesterday than it was today. Women doing five laps as opposed to the men's seven today, back in 1995 when the course was slightly longer. The men did six, the women did four. But it was Chandel Decor who led up the uh, grassy bank, up the very, very tough climb, the Trek VW rider, Caroline Alexander, as you would expect, right to the fore with Leslie Tomlinson, the Kona rider, number five, and the sensation of the women's round, apart from Alison Dunlap, the Spanish rider who's actually absolutely blasted from nowhere, Margarita Fulana Riera. But Alison Sider, who said last week, after the Budapest round, that she was very, very tired, as did Paola Pezzo. She had the strength to go hard from the beginning. But it was Caroline Alexander, after her eight spots, Budapest breathing heavily after that tough climb, the first climb of the race. Leading out from world champion Alison Sider and World Cup winner. They had a gap over Chandel de Cor, Paola Pezzo and Margarita Fulana. Conditions absolutely dreadful compared to the men's today. Raining very, very hard. In fact, it rained throughout the race. Caroline Alexander had a good lap, a good uh, gap over Alison Sidor. With World Cup leader Paola Pezzo, quite content not to go too hard from the start. She likes these sort of conditions. And it showed because she overhauled Sidor. Or should I say she overhauled Chandel to core to get within striking distance of uh, Caroline Alexander and indeed Sidor. Sidor not realizing that uh, the rest of the uh, World Cup contingent, knowing that they had to raise their game to get to the level that, uh, that she was at. And this is where technique is so important and handling so, so important. Petso, one of the better cross-country descenders, as is Alison Sidor. Of course, she came from the road. Still does do a lot of training and the odd occasional road race just to keep her hand in. But it was on lap three that uh, Caroline Alexander and Alison Sidor could only just watch as World Cup leader, Olympic champion Alison Sidor wearing her gold shorts, rode away from the two riders. The British rider and the Canadian rider. On one of the toughest climbs of the race. Alexander, 29 seconds behind, eight seconds in front of Sidor with Margarita Falana. About seven seconds behind Sidor course, Caroline Alexander, there you see it, 29 seconds behind Petso at this stage of the race. These are the sort of conditions that indeed Paola Petso won the world championship back in 1993 at Metabier in France. In fact, the conditions were even worse than this because the ground under wheel was absolutely atrocious. It's reasonably hard today, or should I say yesterday it was reasonably hard. But it, back in 1993, it was like a, an extra long cyclocross race, and that is Petso's forte. She likes climbs that are long, slow, tough. She doesn't even mind if there's a lot of, a lot of running. But the winner of, her, of the first two rounds of the World Cup and the second place rider in the next round was determined to stamp her authority on the five lap women's race before the World Cup circus moves across, or the cross country 
Circus moves across to the uh, North American continent. Petso, a supreme bike handler. Karana Alexander not noted for being so good, but ex much, much more improved than she was. She's done a lot of practicing over the winter. From in fact, she's ridden a lot of the uh, a lot of the cyclocross races as well. She won her third national cyclocross championships in January in Great Britain. There's no rider really at the moment who can uh, expect to get within a couple of minutes at least on the cross-country mountain bike circuit of uh, Caroline Alexander. And in fact, at the moment, there doesn't really appear to be anyone that can keep up with the consistent pet so either. But Caroline Alexander yesterday was trying her hardest in the worst of conditions. And in fact, after the race, Alexander said that uh, it felt like Petso was toying with the rest of the World Cup riders. Even the winner of the World Cup from last year, Alison Sidor, having problems with the strength and consistency of Petso. But in fact, Petzo had no problems coming across the line to take her third first spot in the World Cup in 146-43. Like Martinez today, she doesn't even look, or she didn't even look too bothered, too tired about her performance. Been training specifically for this. And Caroline Alexander gets her next best result to the win that she had in St. Vendel three weeks ago. She comes across she came across the line 39 seconds behind Paola Petso. In fact, she made up the gap. Alison Sidor coming over in third spot. An improvement on her previous <laughs> her previous two fifth spots. She was 122 behind Paola Pezzo. Or should I say 123. Carolina Alexander making up the gap to Pezzo. It was over a minute, but by the time she crossed the line, only 39 seconds. But there's the standings in the Women's World Cup. 365 points for Pezzo. Sidor in second, Dunlap in third, Denegri in fourth, Le Leslie Tomlinson being consistent this year in fifth. Caroline Alexander moves up to eight spot from 10. Well, I hope you enjoyed that brief look at the women's race. Paolo Pezzo taking that in first spot. Caroline Alexander, the Richie Ryder, in second. Alison Seidel, the World Cup winner from last year and world champion in third. In the men's race, it was a very, very, very dominant ride from Miguel Martinez in first. Christophe Dupuy was in second. Teammate Ludovic Dubot in third. I hope you've enjoyed the program today. What a fabulous result we had for both the men's race and the women's race. We will move over to the downhill circuit next week. We will be coming from Cape Town, South Africa for the first race of the Grundig Downhill World Cup. The cross country moves across to North America in June. Thank you very much.